So the final element then is to bring through the subject snowboarder, Steve, which is actually in the other tab across the top up in here. So I click on that one, it takes me back to the snowboarder file. So we need to take across not just one, but two layers across the other document. And the, in order to do that, well, first of all, we need to unlock the Steve layer. So I'm going to click on the padlock to unlock that one. And then we really need to be able to take both layers across at the same time. It would be no good if we took one layer and not the other. So this is one of the scenarios where smart objects are incredibly handy. I'm going to hover my cursor over the Steve layer and shift and left click on that to make both layers active. You can see in here, both highlighted. Then what I'll do is go to the layers panel flyout menu and choose convert to smart object halfway down that list. Now it will look when I click on this option as though we've kind of flattened the artwork. All that it does is it combines both of those two layers into kind of a protected, what's called a smart object. There will still be accessible all those individual elements, but it just will appear and act as one layer. So click on convert to smart object. It will take the topmost layer name as the new layer name. So I'm going to double click on that and call this smart Steve because it's a smart object. And then from here, notice that we have this symbol, which means that it's a protected layer. The contents inside are all protected. And then we can then transfer this across to the other file. So hover your cursor over the layer name, right click on it and then choose duplicate layer. And when you click on that, it will assume you want to duplicate that layer into the current document. That's why it puts the word copy on the end to try and differentiate between the original and the copy version. All we do though is go straight down to destination, change the document to a five poster and it removes the word copy off the end. Then you can click OK. That will send it to the other file. Now you've no way of knowing if that's worked other than to take a look up here and you'll see that the name of the currently active layer will be shown in the document tab across the top and there smart Steve as we can see when it's been moved across will automatically be active. So it has worked. You can even just click on there and make sure. So there he is. That's the somewhat gargantuan snowboarder Steve we need scaling down a little bit, but that has worked absolutely fine. Notice that it's been brought across um, as what looks like one layer as our smart object. So I'm going to go back um, I'm going to go to file. I'm going to save this document and I'm going to close it down because we don't need it anymore. And I want to point out that the item in here is not that original file. It's a copy. So that layer called smart Steve is not now associated with the original document. It's completely separate, but I will show you some of the fantastic benefits of this smart object. First of which is that we need to scale this down in size. So the layer is active. I'll go to edit, go down to free transform, which allows us to do just about anything that we need to do. Um, scale, rotate and skew and all kinds of things. And it also has a keyboard shortcut of command and T or control T on a PC. When I click on that, the entire layer will become active. If I zoom out here with my scroll wheel, that is the size of snowboarder Steve, pretty big. Now to prevent him disappearing off the canvas, what I would say is take a look at which handle appears in the bounding box on the canvas itself. Well, it's usually always the top left. So bearing that in mind, if you go up to the top to the options bar and then click on the tick to activate what's called the reference point, that little grid of nine squares replicates your bounding boxes. And if you click on the top left corner, now that will be pinned down in place and it will scale to and from that position at the top left corner of the bounding box. Make sure that your width and height is linked together, activated by the link between the two, the symbol in there. And then from here, well, you can swipe across there and we could type in something like, let's try 50. And you'll notice that Steve, snowboarder Steve, smart Steve now, um, stays on the canvas. Once you've got it down to a size that you think is you know, about appropriate, then you can just hover your cursor in there, click and drag, and you can move him around. Do just make sure that all of Smart Snowboarder Steve goes down to the very bottom of the canvas at the very least. He, he can disappear off. I mean, you know, not too far, but um, just add him on there like so. And make sure he runs right to the edge of the canvas. 
Um, from there, if you wish to, you could even go to the corners, hover over those, drag and scale them up and down. Because we've linked the width and height up at the top up here, we won't be stretching and distorting uh, the width and the height disproportionately. Um, so you can adjust that as you need to. When you're happy, then I've got mine set to what, 48, 49 ish percent. Click on the tick. And there we have a montage. So we originally took a photograph of Steve, the snowboarder, and we removed the white background. We created a brand new document with all the dimensions set up exactly as we need them for the intended purpose, whether it's for a cover of a magazine or whether it's just for a poster or a flyer. And then we juxtaposed the subject and the background together. And Steve has now been released back into his natural habitat, into the mountains. So I'm going to save this file. In the next video, I will show you how we can edit the contents of the Smart Steve layer.